Legend Total War here, and today I'm finally able to explain to you guys how Slanesh functions in Total War Warhammer 3. Uh, we'll talk about their campaign mechanics, how they function on the battlefield, and then fight a battle against Scarbrand here. So, uh, Slanesh's faction is the most diplomatic out of any of the demonic factions. You don't automatically go to war with the Empire and Kislev, um, although they do... Uh, by default hate you even though you've got diplomatic relations plus 20 with all factions They have such a huge aversion to you in the first place that they're still gonna hate you But they don't automatically declare war now there are um, Also Norsecan factions that you can um, do a fair bit of diplomacy with now the other chaos gods They can do diplomacy with them, but with Slanesh you can do more with them So Slanesh is able to trade you can actually get tradable resources and uh, establish a trade agreement allowing Slanesh to kind of have an economic edge over the other uh, Chaos Gods, but let's talk about the uh, the seduce mechanic first. So as you seduce certain factions and there's various ways to seduce them uh, This bar will fill up. There's various meters in which you will gain benefits with them and Then when it gets to full you can full-on dominate them at a cost of 300 devotees and make them your vassal. Now, vassals in Warhammer 3 don't seem particularly good because um, you don't get that much money out of them. They're diplomatically tied to you, but that can actually be a bit of a problem. Um, other factions that you have treaties with, with will still declare war on your vassals at no repercussions to them. So, for example, let's just say I dominated Kislev. It's difficult to do, but you can do it. Made them my vassal. And then Kugath Plaguefather, who I had a military alliance with, and was really friendly with, but he hates Kislev, he declares war on, on um, Kislev. Well, I have to side with the vassal, because I'm diplomatically bound to them, and... Um, yeah, it would take a huge reliability penalty if I don't, but Kugath, w once again, the AI just doesn't take diplomatic penalties from breaking treaties, because he would te technically be the, uh, the breaker of the, uh, the military alliance. So, factions that you have military alliance with can still declare war on your vassals, and it's a bit of a balancing game there to decide which vassals you really want. Having weak vassals doesn't seem to be that worth it. Uh, I've yet to dominate Kislev in any of my campaigns, but I know it is possible. I got got fairly close until I did out some other stuff. So, how do you go about seducing them? Various things. Doing diplomatic treaties with them will provide you with some uh, some seduction over time, but each diplomatic treaty that you establish will eventually just wear off on them. So at the moment, I've got a non-aggression pact with the Graylings here, and that's providing 10 uh, diplomacy with the uh, Slanchy factions per turn, but that'll eventually expire. To be so honest, if I, I establish another one now, you have my time. Without doubt. I instantly get some more seduction, but that'll provide a bit of extra diplomacy with them for a bit longer. So they may actually get fully seduced without me doing anything else. So it's very easy to dominate the uh, the Norskin factions. Very difficult to dominate um, the other ones because they've got a lot of resistance to you as well. So if we have a look at this bar, you see how it says uh, racial resistance minus two. The Empire and Kislev have much higher resistances. Also the number of settlements. Um, so the bigger they are, the harder it is to, to dominate them. However, the more settlements they have, the more cults you can create, and sometimes it actually makes it easier to dominate. It still takes longer, but it becomes easier. Also, the total amount, see what it says 170 there? The total amount needed is dependent on how big they are. So, if Kislev's got like 20 settlements, then you might need like 500 total uh, seduction in order to do it. But if you've got a cult in every single one of their settlements providing seduction, then you can get it done fairly quickly, I suppose. So, let's talk about cults then. Cults with Slanesh are probably among the best out of the uh, the Chaos Gods. We can press this button here for uh, a thousand devotees and create uh, three cults randomly in the world in human or elf owned settlements. Now, I wouldn't do it normally in this situation here because it costs a thousand at the moment and you can reduce that cost quite significantly and I just don't really need those cults right now. Uh, but just to showcase to you guys what exactly it does, I'll press the button. Okay, and we created a cult at the Village of the Moon, at Plesk, in Kislev, and at Norden, in Nordland. Now, once you've created the cult there, you've uh, you got four different options here, depending on you know exactly what you want to do. 
So in terms of um, seducing them quickly, sometimes uh, this one here is best, but you got to do that in rich settlements or else this one here is better. But this one provides extra devotees per turn. Also, if you do vassalize somebody, you're probably going to want to make sure you've still got some cults in there because the seductive influence can go down and the cults make sure that it sort of mitigates that. So providing devotees per turn is pretty good. And um, it doesn't cost gold to build them, it costs more devotees. Now, later on in the campaign, you'll be rolling around in devotees, unless you're you know, doing terrible. But in the early stages of the campaign, it's probably not worth doing that, just because we're not going to seduce any of them. And, you know, it's only got a 10 turn cooldown, and plus we can use um, cultists. So if we have a look here, this particular cultist... Um, when you recruit them, you can send them down there to sort of like create vampire coves, similar to how the, the vampire coves did it, and just go around creating um, 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 cults. Now, they do have a 15 turn cooldown, but you just send more of them down there. You can eventually get like all of Kislev um, with cults pretty quickly. As long as the settlements don't get blown up, they stay there. Also providing lots of Slaneshi influence in an area. So if we have a look here again. Northman come. Slaneshi influence. Basically, I think it goes three Slaneshi influence per 100 corruption in their territories. Um, and there's, you know, there's a very other things you can do. Another thing that you can do to, um, to seduce factions is to give them a gift of Slaanesh. There's two ways, essentially, to give them a gift. One is to defeat them in battle, but not kill them. Unless it's a legendary lord or immortal lord, in which case, if they can't be killed, then they'll... they'll keep the seduction but if you kill the regular lord then the seduction doesn't matter anymore where they'll give you devotees per turn slanesh corruption local province and seductive influence per turn for the character now if you do an agent action such as hinder replenishment with them that'll also give them a gift but it seems like it doesn't provide all of these benefits and only provides the devotees per turn without the seductive influence so you kind of want to beat them in battle but not kill them basically you want to toy around with factions that you want to dominate uh, the human factions uh, if you want to eventually vassalize them. You want them to create as many characters as possible so you can keep giving them those gifts, and eventually they're just in totally infected with uh, Slaanesh uh, corruption, and you just dominate them, and then you've got yourself a vassal, and you have to fight them anymore. Of course, other demonic factions will get in your way, but that's just how it is. I think uh, Slaaneshi factions, well, um, specifically um, Nakari, your job is really to conquer the other Chaos Gods while messing around with the human factions. That seems to be his campaign, rather than just straight up conquering everything. On the battlefield, um, Slaneshi armies are very quick, but also very squishy. They seem to be very good in the early game at uh, capturing minor settlements. These were so easy to capture uh, from the uh, from the Warriors of Chaos, because in most cases, I just captured all of their points. They just couldn't catch up to most of my units. I didn't even really need to try to kill them. So a lot of the battles, I did, didn't take many casualties just because I'm capping all the points. Uh, but if going up against Korn um, is a bit tricky for them because we do get smashed quite quickly. They don't have a lot of hit points on the Demonets of Slaanesh. So a Bloodletter, which is comparable in cost, will essentially beat the crap out of you. Another thing that Slaanesh factions can do, and this is very powerful uh, to do with devotees, you can make a... A disciple army so it costs 300 um, devotees you have to do it in a region that has at least 25 slanesh corruption the more slanesh corruption the bigger the army that will be spawned and you also need to make sure you've got a minimum of 10 um, 10 units in your army so this army that you spawn costs no upkeep or no money upkeep it costs devotees per turn but only like 20 and then it constantly takes attrition and you just basically send it at the enemy for it to die but you, you know soften them up with it or you get it to reinforce you but it's a very powerful mechanic that you can really utilize to great effect later on in the campaign anyway let's now take nakari here and smash up Scarbrand. It's very early in the campaign, so I don't exactly have a lot of unit variety. I didn't disband any of his initial units. I recruited a bunch of Demonettes when available, and uh, Marauders when available. Money was a bit tight, so I would have preferred to have gone more with Demonettes, but money was tight. Anyway, let's jump in here and see how we go. So it is on legendary difficulty with very hard battles, so naturally, the auto resolve thinks we'll lose, and the bounce of power probably isn't in our favor. However, we're Slaanesh and we can seduce these bitches. So, I don't have a lot of budget and it does take up money from your um, from your income. So, if we have a look at what we want to seduce, we should probably take out some of their more dangerous units. So, we can't take a, um, 
a Blood Crusher of Corn. It simply costs too much. But I can take either a Chaos Warrior of Corn or one of the Blood Letters. Now, because we've got a lot of demons in here, the Blood Letters have um, um, magical attacks, so they're really weak. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the the Blood Letters really smash up the uh, Demonets of Slanesh, so I think it would be in my best interest to seduce one of them. We could get the Flesh Hounds of Corn, but I'm not really that concerned about them. We want something that's going to be able to, to also hit back at him. So that's now mine, and now we've gone from a close defeat to a Valiant defeat, which on Legendary difficulty basically means the Bounce of Power is now in our favor. Now that actually cost me favor, like the 1,680, that's out of my treasury now. Now you can reduce the cost of seducing units and, and eventually also increase your budget. So later on the campaign, it's very powerful against uh, enemy forces, especially when they're attacking your settlements because they don't know you're going to seduce them, right? So they attack your settlement and then you seduce, you know, one or two of their units and then suddenly the battles in their favor sorry in your favor and um they don't withdraw from it so they're just stuck having to fight the battle and you just throw the unit away so at the end of this battle here i want to make sure that this blood letter is actually dead because if it's not dead even if i win he gets it back but if i just sacrifice it he doesn't get it back all right so what we want to do here because we have one particular edge over over corn, magic and speed. We really want to make use of that. I'm going to send Nakari up there to do just a little bit of magic. I think that shadow magic is significantly better than Slanesh magic, but Nakari is so damn fast. What I want to do is just go over there and piss him off to get his fast units over here early so we can smash them. I don't want to be fighting his entire army all at once. So that's what we want to focus on here. Oh yeah, you should be up front. You'll be the first to die. Your desires are mine. So eventually this one here can get a uh, Seeker Chariot. That'll be really good, and I've got some good spells on it. I just don't want to go over there and get caught by the uh, by the Bloodhounds. She's very quick, but Nakari can... I think he can outrun the Flesh Hounds. Yeah, he can. He's that fast. But I haven't really gone down his magic line. All I've got is Lash of Slanesh, which is shit. But it's all I got. Now, he didn't sacrifice to the uh, to the Blood you. Throne. Uh, sorry, to the Skull Throne in this. So he doesn't have his um, Blood Letter summons at the moment. So I can take my time, recharge some Winds of Magic. He is gaining nothing by being defensive here. Whereas I'm just recharging my Winds so we can use it more often. Just stare at him for a bit. See, if he had his summons, I'd probably want to go straight at him to try to limit the amount of times he'll do it. Although in the early game, he only has two. But later on in the campaign, he'll get four or five or six. And that can that can be super annoying. You go up against just one lord, and they can summon six blood letters. And that can do a lot of damage to you. So I still strongly believe that Khorne is the strongest of the Chaos Gods in terms of how... The, in the hands of the player. Funnily enough, in, t in the hands of the AI, Khorne actually doesn't really do that well. Doesn't utilize a lot of his mechanics. I think the most annoying to deal with when under AI control is Siege. Alright, this does 100% armor piercing, so we should probably do that on the Chaos Warriors. But yeah, that did 1000 damage, which, you know, for 6 wins of magic is meh, whatever. Melkoth mystifying Miasma would have done more, but... I just didn't want to do that. Now, Nakari himself is very quick. He dishes out a lot of damage, but he's also very squishy. Luckily, he's most vulnerable to missile units, and he ain't got any. So, if he doesn't want to charge at me, I'll just do it again. Because we don't want to lose all of our army fighting this battle, because we've got to keep fighting afterwards. So just wait, and he'll eventually decide to charge. There we go. Now, like I said, I wanted to piss him off. No, he's not really going for it as quite as much. Okay. He's, uh, he's sending some of his infantry behind here. I'm going to see if I can get Scarbrand himself to chase me. Because I just don't want to deal with their entire army all at once. I just want Nakari to just really annoy him. 
Because there's nothing he can do to catch me. But yeah, under no circumstance do we actually want to fight Scarbrand in melee. Not on very hard battle difficulty. So yeah, we're just going around being super annoying. And yeah, having these guys come in here nice and early, this is good. I'm going to charge at them. And these guys here, I'm going to have them fall back to there. And we're going to get rid of this stuff nice and early. So Slanesh is going to be a really good faction if you've got a decent amount of micro, because the quicker you are, the better with this. But yeah, if your micro is not the best, probably picking a faction like Nurgle would be better, since you basically need no micro with Nurgle. Yeah, let's get rid of all of these guys here real quick. Okay, now with Scarbrand, we kind of want him to just be fighting our garbage marauders. Just because he does so much damage. Might as well have him fighting something crap. We want to defeat his army and just get him to disintegrate. If we had missile units, we'd take him out that way. Uh, another thing would be good is probably enfeebling foe on him. That'll slow him down a bit. And our... Blood letters are just about gone. Well, it's his blood letters. So, like I said, I don't want to send Nakari in on... Um, Scarbrand, he won't win. No, now we use Shadow Magic. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not good. He's... he's the AI does do a lot of, <laughs> like, anti-hero targeting. Come on, get out of there. How are we going over here? Come on, I want you to die. You die. Come on, get out of there. Okay, yeah, keep her out of there. Because, yeah, he, he goes for him. He goes for him. Get out of there. Oh, you can see he's really going for him. Oh, whatever. But we're winning the battle. When he's taking too much damage. Come on, sacrifice the blood letters. I want them dead. Okay. I think uh, Nakari will do a pretty good job against that blood shrine there. Scarbrand's racking up a pretty good kill count, but he doesn't have Slaughter and Carnage yet, so he's not getting stronger. And that army ability here, it, it's basically like a Spirit Leech. Well, more like a Melkoth Mystifying Miasma, I guess. Just does direct damage, it's not too bad. And they're out of here, but we still have these goddamn things here. I wanted them to die in the battle. So how am I going to fix that? <laughs> how am I going to fix that? Well, I'm done with you. Goodbye. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Alright, how many of them left? 17. I can't do this on my own units. And... 
I still got five wins of magic left. I might have to... I don't have two points into that. Come on, you don't have long before this starts. <laughs> Come on. Uh, if I could just get it to crumble. Okay, maybe it's because he's in Nakari's zone of influence. If you run out this way... There we go. Fuck off. <laughs> And that's how you can sort of fight as Slanesh. You sort of use it, use it and abuse it, and toss it away. We probably didn't need to seduce that unit to uh, to win the battle, but it definitely made the battle a lot easier. Because yeah, if we didn't wipe it out, it would have just gone straight back over here, and that, it's fine. It just means another battle, uh, and on. Higher difficulties, you really don't want to be auto resolving, especially against Corn. Corn seems to be really strong in auto resolve. So, winning the battle, we can get some devotees or we can get some money. I find that in the early game, uh, Slanesh is a little bit broke. Later on in the campaign, he'll be slightly richer than other factions, other demonic factions, but gonna need that favor for now. And that's pretty much how Slanesh functions. If you have any further questions, we'll now be starting a live stream campaign as Nakari. Yes, we'll obviously, be starting a new campaign. So we can go through everything. If you've got any further questions, more than happy to, to answer them. And uh, we can play for as long as we not, uh, as long as long we like now. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this explanation. Um, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of um, innuendos in the chat about uh, Slanesh. So let's uh, get on down to that. Anyway. Appreciate you guys, and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to uh, to join the live stream. I'll leave a link in the chat, because I'll be in there as, um, as this is wrapping up. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you. See you next time, fuckers. Bye.